Hi friends, my name is Lisa and I'd like to welcome you to this amazing Jack from the Nightmare Before Christmas art kit. Inside your art kit you've got a placemat that you can set down wherever you're at just kind of to protect the table that you're working on. You've got um, some brushes, a towel to help dry the brushes when we have to rinse. You've got a couple bulldog clips that we can use to hang our painting when we're done some sandpaper that we're gonna to use towards the end of our project when it dries. Three colors of paint. We've got raw sienna black and white. And then in your kit, you've also got a little cup. You'll wanna fill out about halfway full with water when we're ready to rinse our brushes, if you need to rinse your brushes. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. So to kind of give an antique look to our painting, we're gonna to need to layer some colors on. We're gonna start um, generally in paintings they use like a, a yellowy mustard color but that's sometimes a little expensive to buy and a little bit hard to find so we're going to substitute that with a raw sienna so we're going to start to layer some of these brown colors at the bottom of the painting then we're going to layer on our whites and then we're going to layer on our black colors so it's almost doing like um, sprayed graffiti or a sprayed stencil look only using acrylics and something that's a little bit easier to get your hands on. So Jack is the perfect kind of um, character to use this technique with. So we're going to start with one of our square brushes. There's nothing fancy about this brush, but this is actually one of my favorite go-to brushes for painting. It's just a really nice disposable brush, so I'm not too worried if anything happens to it. So I'm just gonna set everything aside here and we're gonna get painting. So one of the first things that we wanna do is we wanna lay down some color for the background when we start scratching away some of the surface paint when we antique. So I'm gonna actually start with the suit that Jack's wearing and the cute little bat head. So it's actually my favorite part of the suit. I think it's so cute. So I love The Nightmare Before Christmas because I love all the little details that are in it. So I'm going to start with this dark, raw sienna color. I'm going to take the square brush and I'm going to take grab a little bit of paint. So in your kit, I actually included a little foam plate for you. So if you need to transfer a little bit of paint to the foam plate, you can or you can just very carefully take your brush and put it in that little paint pot that you have. I'm gonna grab a little bit of that dark brown, and then I'm gonna to start to work it into the business suit. So right here we have some lines that kind of define the parts of the suit. So I'm gonna paint on either side of that line, and I'm gonna to start to just press some color in. I'm not going to paint up to the line. I'm gonna leave a little bit of space before the line so I still know where those lines are in the suit so I still have some separation. So I don't wanna cover up the lines. I'm just gonna paint close to them so I still have some separation. I'm also gonna hold my paintbrush and grab it just like I would a pencil. Um, so if you use a couple fingers to hold a pencil, um, the standard way of holding a pencil kind of like this. I'm going to grab it where the blue part meets the silver part. I'm going to hang on to it with a pretty firm grip and I'm going to grab a little bit more paint. I'm just going to use some short brush strokes. Kind of messy, nothing really fancy. Just some quick motions to really press that paint into that canvas panel that you have. All right, so I'm gonna move on to the next section. This is gonna be a background sky. This little cutout triangle right here. So I'm gonna work on this next part of the suit, watching out for the face of the bat. And I'm leaving that line in between the sections of a suit now, if you accidentally put those lines together, don't freak out, it'll be okay. We've got this, we're just gonna end up dropping in a white line in paint later on, so it will be okay, I promise.
So again, push out any raised bits of paint that you may have as best you can. And since this is gonna be my bottom background layer, I'm just kind of smoothing over everything one more time. So I'm working on the sections of the suit. I'm not gonna do this middle part because this is white. I'm going over the parts that the black is gonna go over. So this is the background sky. So I'm gonna come up to this next section of suit right here. And what's great about this flat panel canvas is I can just turn it right on the paper on the table. So depending on what kind of environment you're in when you're painting, if your paint starts to feel a little sticky or tacky, where it starts to feel like um, it's just really setting up, almost feeling a little bit like glue, you can take the very tip of your brush and just break the surface of the water. You don't want to dunk your brush into the water because then your brush is going to have way too much water on it and it's going to drip which will be disastrous you just want to take the very tip of the bristles and just break the surface of the water then you can come back and grab a little bit of paint and it'll soften that paint up make it a little bit easier to paint with so i'm going to come to this very last section I can come all the way to the very edge of that line that's on the canvas and all the way covering up this line. So here I left a little bit of space so that I could see where those sections divide on the clothing. And here I'm just going to come all the way to the edges because it's just background on either side. When I come close to the little bat, I'm going to leave a little bit of space because it'll be black, touching black. The two colors, so I want to make sure that they don't um, bleed together right there. All right, so when I've done one side, I'm gonna go ahead and work on the other side of the suit. Everything are sections of the suit, except for this little kind of U-shape right here. That's gonna be the background um, sky. So let's go ahead and work on the other half of the suit. And if you're working a little bit faster, you can speed up the video. If you need a little bit more time, then you can pause the video and get caught up, which is really great about having this at your fingertips. So we'll see you in just a few minutes when you have both sides of the suit done.
Now that we've got all the color down on the background of the suit, we're gonna go ahead and rinse this brush out. I'm gonna grab the blue towel. I'm gonna take my brush to the very bottom of the cup. I'm gonna scrub the bottom of the cup with the brush where the bristles are fanned out on the bottom of the cup. Then I'm gonna grab the brush with the towel, give it a little pinch, and then the brush will come out nice and clean. All right, so we're gonna work on some of the black areas of Jack. We're gonna use just straight black paint. We're gonna paint in the very center of the eyes, the nose. We're gonna do the inside of the mouth. And then we're gonna do the entire bat head, but not the inside of the eyes. So we're just gonna start laying down some of our colors while we're letting this dry. I don't want to accidentally get any of that on my arms while I'm drying, so I'm actually gonna flip my painting upside down. I'm gonna work backwards starting from the bat and adding all of my black, starting with the bat going this way. So you can work however you want to. I've also included a little round brush if it's easier to get into some of the hard to reach places. If the bristles feel a little um, hard to work with, you can dip the brush in water to soften the bristles and then give them a little dry with your fingers or the towel before you start painting. And then the same thing with the colors, if they start to feel a little tacky, you can soften the color up with just a little bit of water. Just be careful that you don't add too much water um, because those colors will start dripping. Once I've finished with the eyes, the nose, the mouth, and the head of the bat, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna add the black for the suit right over the brown that I've painted. I just wanna be really careful and make sure that all of those dark brown spots that I've painted are dry. just putting a second coat of paint over which is the black and it's okay if a little bit of the brown peeks through I just want to work to get that second coat of paint on
Now that all of the black is done, I'm gonna go ahead and rinse out the brush that I was using, taking it all the way to the bottom of the cup, scrubbing it on the bottom of the cup. I'm gonna bring my towel over to my paintbrush, catch my paintbrush and my towel, give it a little squeeze, and now I've got a nice clean paintbrush. All right, so the next thing that we're gonna work on is we're gonna work on the entire um, background to the painting, giving it that antique paper feel. So we're gonna use a mixture between the raw sienna and the white, and we're gonna use kind of a stamping feel with our paintbrush. So when we use our paintbrush, and I'll show you dry on the canvas pad first, we're gonna take a combination of the raw sienna and the white, both colors on the brush, and we're gonna use the brush to stamp. Now, as we get closer to the skeleton of Jack, we wanna be really careful as we start to stamp. So some of the techniques that I use with the brush, I'm gonna turn this upside down so it's a little bit easier to get to his features, is I'll take the paintbrush away from the actual skeleton and I'll wiggle the brush so the bristles get closer to the skeleton and I'll push the paint towards his face. So I'm not worried about crossing over into the skeleton. Another technique that I can do is I can take the side of the brush and wiggle it closer right up against the line so that I'm getting close to him but not actually going over into his face. Or I can use this to help me create a straight line and then kind of squish the paint along the side of it to kind of give it that um, kind of leathery paper feel that I'm looking for. So you've got a couple different brushes. We want to look for the one that has the straightest edge when I fan the, the bristles out. So I'm going to look for the brush that the bristles look nice and even. And I like this brush the best. So I'm going to get those bristles wet just to start me out. Make sure that paint is nice and soft. I'm going to grab a little bit of that raw sienna. I'm going to start to stamp, pushing all of that paint down into the canvas. Then I'm going to grab a little bit of white and stamp right on top of that. And that's going to give me kind of like a two-toned textured feel. So I'm going to alternate between the two colors. I'm going to also alternate the direction of my paintbrush so that I don't see just fanned brush strokes every time I put the, the paintbrush down. If I end up in one direction, it's going to look like little bird feet. So I want to alternate the brush all the way around. So I end up with little texture marks. So it looks like weathered paper.
when the background's done, I'm gonna go ahead and rinse out my brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so this brush has really had it. So I'm just gonna take this brush, move it up on my um, place setting somewhere, and then I'll throw that away. So I'm gonna take the brush that I have that's in really good shape, and then I'm gonna to start to fill in um, the best part of Jack, the neck, and then the head of Jack. Now what's really cool about this is we get to play with a little bit of shading, and we're gonna play between the colors that we have with the white and the black, and we're gonna be able to start to mix in some of the grays. Now with some of the shading that we get to do, we get to use some of that technique that we did where we started to kind of pat at the canvas, but we're not going to do quite as much. So usually what I like to do is I like to just start with the base color like white, and I'll show you here in the vest. What I'll do is I'll lay down just one solid color of white kind of as a foundation, and I'll fill in the entire shape first with just a thin layer of white paint. And then this really kind of helps me clean up some of the edges that I have going on in my painting. So after I filled in an area in the white, then I'm gonna to start to add a little bit of shading with some stamping. So I'm going to grab a little bit of the white paint. And then using just the very corner of the brush, I'm gonna grab just a small amount of black and I'm gonna to mix together a very, very light gray. Now I'd rather start out lighter and then add a little bit more black to it than start out too heavy handed and then try to cover it up because that's not gonna work. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to start to stamp in some shading. And the reason why I'm stamping is because I want to mimic the effect and the texture of this kind of paper that I've created that I want the mind to kind of imagine or create. I don't want too many different techniques, too many different brush strokes in this painting. It would be very confusing. So um, I want to try to keep things as uniform as possible. So I'm just gonna add in some shading into this coat area. And you can add as much or as little as you want to. I'm going really light right now while the paint is still wet and still workable. I'm gonna keep a towel handy and nearby so if I get too much paint, I can wipe it off. Okay, that looks good, so I'm gonna stop right there. All right, then I'm gonna move up to the neck area. I'm kind of deciding that a lot of the heaviness of my shadow is gonna come along the back side of the head, the back side of the neck, and the back side of the jacket. So I'm going to do the same thing with the neck. I've got a little bit of black still on my brush, and that's okay. I know it's going to give me just a little bit of light gray as I work up into the skeletal structure of Jack into his neck. Same idea, now I'm gonna stamp in a little bit of shadow, so I'm gonna turn the picture. And I wanna be careful because if I haven't let my picture dry, I wanna be careful not to grab any of that raw sienna. Now it probably isn't gonna look bad to have a little bit of that color in the painting. It's actually probably gonna look pretty good. 
So I'm just gonna grab a little bit of that shadow. keeping that towel handy so I can dry that color off my brush. Now I'm going to move up into his cute little head. I'm going to start with the back area of his head. I'm going to start to add some of that white paint. And this is where I can clean up any of the lines if I didn't like them and they were a little too messy. I'll run right along the edge. Oh, his head is so cute. I'm just gonna work on the back of his skull right now. I'm not gonna get too close to the mouth or any of the details of the mouth quite yet. Still kind of just thinking about what I wanna do with some of the shadows on his head. It's quite a big area to work with. He's got quite a big, quite a big area that we need to figure out how we're gonna shade and try to keep the paint workable. So I know that I want the shadowing to come underneath, a little bit underneath his mouth, along the back side of his cheek and the back side of his head. So I've put in a pretty generous amount of paint right here without having any raised um, clumps of paint. I'm gonna grab a little bit more white. I'm gonna start out easy on the gray again, and I'm gonna start that same kind of stamping pattern. And instead of coming in stripes forward, I'm gonna curve the brush so it follows the curve of the skeleton of the head. So what I mean by that is instead of coming out straight, which would look a little odd, I'm gonna follow the, the curve, the direction of the head. I'm gonna start to stamp in some shadow. Little short, loose brush strokes. I'm gonna go pretty easy. So say for example, you put a big spot that is a little bit darker than what you wanted, say like what I just did right here, I'm going to grab a little bit of white and then I'm going to keep blending that spot into the existing paint that I have and it'll start to soften up. I can also wipe my paintbrush on my towel, grab a little bit of white paint and work that color until it softens up as well. So I'm gonna turn him around so I can see how he's looking. So I've got quite a bit of gray back here from demonstrating what happens when you make it dark. So now I'm gonna come and I'm gonna stamp in some white using my paintbrush like a stamp because I wanna mimic that paper. Then I'm just kind of working on the back of that head area. my brush gets too loaded with paint, I'll wipe it off and grab a little bit more white paint and continue working. Good. I'm gonna use the same gray that I've been mixing and I'm just gonna switch to this little tiny round brush. 
And I'm gonna go ahead and fill in this section by his eyes. So forgive me for continuing to turn this painting over and over again. So just using a mix of the white and the gray, very inconsistent, we're gonna fill in the depression in his eye socket. face looks a little flat right here so we're going to add some of the details to his face that are really going to help him stand out now. Um, I'm going to hang on to this brush. I don't have to rinse it quite yet but I am going to go back to the square brush that I've been using that's been helping me mix that color. I haven't added any extra white to the canvas panel and so I'm going to do something that I usually never do in painting. Usually I always fully cover canvas and paint but this has already been treated with gesso and been prepped for painting but i'm actually going to leave this canvas raw and i'm not going to put paint on it which i usually never ever do i actually really like the raw canvas look now if you want to you can go ahead and put the white paint on it but i'm not going to i really like how this just looks really raw right now but I do want to come and add some extra features onto Jack so he just doesn't look so flat in the face right now so what we're going to do is we're going to just take a little bit of color and I'm actually going to steal it from some of the color that I have down here because I have so much or you can take it from some of the mixture that you have so I'm going to just grab a little bit of gray I'm going to come up to the very top of the skull and right over this eye, I'm going to add a little bit of shadow coming down. Then his nose also looks very flat. It doesn't look like there's any dimension to his nose. So using our brush, we're going to make some long vertical lines. I'm going at an angle. So I'm going to grab a little bit of paint on my brush. and dragging it very lightly. I'm gonna come down the side of his nose. Just dragging the brush almost like it's very dry, just to give it a little bit of dimension right there. And then coming right underneath the nose using the edge of the brush. I'm just gonna give it a few lines there. So now we have the illusion with our eyes that we've given him some dimension. All right, so now we need to finish talking about the eye socket. So we've given some shadowing to his head, but we need to come all the way back underneath his cheekbone. So we're gonna grab a little bit more paint and dragging our brush, we're gonna come right around his eye socket and down to his mouth. Just coming in right close around his eye socket. And grabbing a little bit more paint in the same color, I'm going to come right up above his mouth. And then we're going to add some really cool details with his teeth. Because he has jacket. Of course. right underneath this chin, coming down. And then I'm gonna let that darker color blend in with that lighter color. 
All right, so now his face looks like he has dimension. He looks pretty cool. He looks like he knows what's going on. We're still kind of missing one thing up here on this kind of skull cap. I'm going to make just a little bit darker shade. And dragging my brush, I'm going to give him just a little bit of a shadow coming down. All right, so let's add some details to his face, which are going to be super incredible. Um, I hung on to this brush because I wasn't too sure what kind of details I wanted to add. I'm going to go ahead and rinse it off. I'm going to grab some black paint and I'm going to work on his very crooked smile. I'm going to use a little bit of water to thin down the black paint and I'm going to hold my brush just like a pencil and I'm going to extend his smile out. So his smile is going to come up a little bit by the back of his head. So if your paint is super wet, you might have to wait a little bit for it to dry. Now we've extended his smile and then we're going to add some details to the front. So we want to add those really crooked cracks um, that make up that kind of skull feature. So this is kind of fun. We're gonna make kind of those really wide cracks about the top of his mouth and then down at the bottom are just gonna be crooked lines. And they're spaced probably I'd say about a quarter inch apart. His mouth is actually quite frightening now that I start painting it. I'm going to rinse the brush out. The same shading we did for the jacket the neck and for the head we're going to do for the inside of the eyes of the bat. So a little bit of white with a little bit of that gray shading. Great job. We're going to rinse out both brushes and get ready to do some detailing in white and black. So we are on our final touches for the painting which are our details. We're going to add in our details in white to Jack's suit. So I'm going to take the round brush that I have. I'm going to use just a tiny bit of water on the tip to help me shape it into a nice round point. I'm going to grab a little bit of the white paint and I'm going to start to add in some of the stripes to his suit. Now the first things that we need to put into his jacket are his uh, collar. So the collar starts from about right here comes down, comes in, and then comes back down again. So we're going to put this shape on both the right and the left side, almost like a lightning bolt. And then I'm going to do the opposite shape on the other side. And then that's the collar to Jack's suit that he has. All right, so this is where you have um, some creative choices that you get to make with your painting. The color white um, right now can be a little bit bright in your painting. So if you want to mix together a light gray, you can do that. 
Also, the white is gonna be a little bit transparent, which will allow you to see the black through, which I kind of like. I don't want to have a super bright white. I kind of like that for just this little face area where we let the canvas pad show through. So for this next section, I like to mix together um, just a really light pale gray, um, something that's not quite so bright as the white, um, just because I, I like that tint a little bit better. But again, this is your personal preference. And then I like to use just a little bit of water so that the paint flows more like an ink pen and um, it's a little bit easier to work with. So a couple tips that I have for you. When I mix my paint, I'm always rolling my brush back and forth so I get that really nice sharp tip on the brush. Then I'm gonna hold my brush just like a, a pencil and then I'm literally gonna pretend in my head that my brush just became a pencil. And I'm just gonna start to work on some really loose, quick lines inside of Jack's jacket. Now I'm not worried if all of the lines are perfect, if they're all going in the same direction. I want some of the lines perhaps to be outside of his um, jacket collar. I'm definitely gonna put some heavier lines in those spaces that I left open because those are some of my lines that I left for definition in a suit jacket. And you can see how quickly and easily those lines really clean up. But those stripes that are actually in his jacket, those are just gonna be short, very loose lines. I'm really not thinking about what I'm doing. I'm just letting it happen. So let's go ahead and work on his suit jacket. You can pause the video, of course, and then start it when you're ready. So the last details that we can add, we need to rinse our brush out. I'm gonna just turn my towel so I've got a clean spot. These last details are in black and it is outlining the bone on the neck and outlining the head. So this is optional. Um, of course, you don't have to do this. It takes a little bit of a steady hand. Um, the best way to do this is to turn the paint um, into a consistency that feels a little bit like a watercolor um, or an ink, so it's not very thick at all. So I'm just adding a little bit of water to the paint to loosen the paint up. 
so that it flows really easy. And then rolling that brush back and forth so that it makes a really nice sharp tip on the edge of it. And then I'm gonna hold the brush exactly like a pencil. Now, once I start moving the paintbrush on the canvas, I'm gonna use a really light touch. I'm gonna go pretty quickly and I'm not gonna stop. So this is one technique that you can use for doing line work on a painting. Um, should also let you know, I don't blink and I hold my breath and I don't know why, but this is always a little bit scary for me too. So here we go. And then when I'm done, I breathe. So I had a little drip of water come down, so my paint was a little too runny. So you can kind of see in, in real time here the dangers of having too much um, paint on your paintbrush, but I don't mind. I think it looks kind of cool. I'm gonna come around to the other side. I just wanna be really careful because I still have some wet paint. I'm gonna try again on the other side. Ah, a little bit more success and then I'll probably just reline this side and then use that watermark as a shadow. Okay, I'm gonna come underneath this little chin area. Line that little neck area and then very carefully just work my way around the skull. So again, this is optional. Um, you don't have to do it, but it's a little cool if you wanna try. God. All right. Good job, everyone. Ooh, a lot of steps to kind of getting this antique look. All right. So at this point, you can work on any touch-ups on your painting, and then we want to let this 100% completely dry, even if it has to dry overnight, because we are going to take some sandpaper to this and do some antiquing. Now, if you absolutely love the way it looks, then you can be 100% done. And the only thing I could recommend is maybe on this little bat, adding maybe like a little white line right here in the same color that you did just for a little bit of shadowing on the bat because the bat is the only thing that doesn't have any shadowing. So it looks really flat. It's the only thing that just doesn't have any character to it. So you might want to add a little little line for like a little highlight or something if you love it the way it is you can work on any touch-ups on it and you're 100 percent done so in your kit um, you've got this really cool square of p150 grit um, paper it's a little bit more fine than uh, the piece of 100 grit sandpaper that i have so what i want to do is i want to start to distress this image that i have and I'm gonna focus on trying to remove some of the black that I've put on Jack and a little bit of the edges of the artwork that I have to expose some of the canvas underneath. So there's different techniques that I could use. I could use a dry brush um, and expose some of that canvas through some of the brushing techniques, but I really want this picture to look like it's been aged that it's been around a really long time. So I just like to use the sandpaper. So I'm gonna tear off a little piece of sandpaper to make it a little bit more comfortable for me to use. Just work in small square sections that I can hold with my fingertips. And then just working along some of the edges, I'm gonna hold the canvas tight in my fingertips. So again, you really wanna make sure that this is really dried thoroughly. Then I'm gonna take a section and just rubbing back and forth with the sandpaper 
I'm going to start to focus on the edges and I'm going to start to remove. some of the paint. And so what will start to happen, I'll bring this up towards the camera a little bit, is we'll start to see some of the canvas peeking through and some of that texture from the canvas. Now I don't go really crazy with this technique, but I do like to see that worn part coming through right there because it starts to feel like this image or this canvas has been transferred from house to house or from place to place or from family to family and been passed down for a long time instead of being such a fresh coat of paint or something that looks very new. So I'm just aging it a little bit. So I'm gonna work kind of a little bit on this tan background on the edges. almost feel like we started going to shop class here for a little bit with the sandpaper. I want to be careful that I go, don't go too um, heavy-handed with the sandpaper else I'm going to tear a hole through the canvas. So I'm just really aiming to take a little bit of that paint off and expose the canvas underneath. dust any of that paint that's coming off right onto the work paper that I have. Places where the paint is on really thick, you're going to have a really hard time sanding that paint off. So I'm going to focus on places where the paint isn't extremely thick on the canvas. muscle but not too much again because we don't want to tear through the canvas. It also feels nice and smooth when you're done which is kind of kind of a neat benefit to this. I'm going to come and work a little bit over in this area. I'm going to focus on Jack's um, costume that he's wearing. So you can stop here if you like this kind of weathered background. If not, we're going to go ahead and antique his, um, not costume, excuse me, but suit that he's wearing. So I'm going to grab a fresh piece of sanding paper. I'm going to start to work on the same technique starting with the edges. Now what should really happen with this is as we start to take off some of the black, we should start to see some of that raw sienna that we put down underneath. start to see some of that antique coloring coming under through underneath the black and if I press even harder I'll get down to that white canvas so this is where it's really nice to have the three layers of coloring So 
I'm just gonna come in and just dress jack suit, pressing pretty light. I don't want to take too much of the paint off of his suit. I just want to take a little bit of the shine from any of the paint that's left there. really see the difference between what the distressed side looks like compared to the cleanly painted side. So I'm just going to rotate this picture and do the same to the other side. off my painting and you'll see that some of that black is coming off. And now that suit looks a little bit distressed. Kind of looks like the picture is really worn. Looks super cool. Um, I can do again very lightly within the um, shirt part of the suit. Over the back. Up the collarbone. Now, as I'm working removing this black, I'm going to keep dusting off my painting. And if I have a dry spot on my towel, I can rip that up and use that to help me dust off the painting. And I might just dress a little bit of that. Face as well. really light so that the whole picture is cohesive. Congratulations on creating your very own Jack, the Nightmare Before Christmas portrait painting. It looks amazing now that it's been antiqued and weathered and looks like it came straight off the halls of a haunted mansion somewhere. So remember you have these great bulldog clips that you can use to attach to the very top of your portrait. So you can pin these to a wall or to a clipboard if you'd like. If you don't have a frame handy to put this in, it's a 9 by 12 flat canvas pad. Um, these are really great to paint with. Again, you can roll it up to keep it and store it somewhere. So congratulations again, and I look forward to doing another project with you. Have a great day.